Hello my friends, Jacob is here once again. I'm so happy that you joined me and you pressed play. Ho ho! We have a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. I know a lot of people want to know what happened while I was in the emergency room. Gonna get to that. Gonna get to that. It actually ties in perfectly with today's show, which has to do with a bunch of monkeys. Yeah, bunch of monkeys. Actually pretty serious stuff, a lot of people concerned about the, the crash of the, you know, the monkeys that were sent to the CDC for whatever, whatever reason they were sent and it was a crash, they, you know, the truck smashed into something else and then all the monkeys, they, uh, you know, some of them got loose and they were nervous, everybody was scared, a bunch of them were missing. And a lot of people online are all just thinking the worst case scenario, of course, it's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be this disease or that disease or something like that. Very spooky, they released the news and this happened in Pennsylvania. And of course, you know, you gotta think, you gotta think, do I think the worst? Or do I think that maybe there's more to this story? I found myself. I was in the kitchen and I was making some dinner, you know, for the familia. We like to get together. I, you know, it's a very important thing to have family time. I hope you do. Hope you take time to sit down. So I'm making my famous whatever it was that leftovers, probably. And Shiloh was there and I'm looking this up and I'm reading all about this. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, now we're gonna find out in the news. Of course, they're gonna say some crazy, there's some crazy virus going around. You know, you know what Shiloh says? You know what Shiloh says to me? She goes, why do you gotta think the worst, dad? And it was like, it hit me. Hit me like uh, right smack dab in the middle, like, right there, right there, boom. Like it, it hit me like a, a smooth stone. It's ironic, right? Guy, you know, Goliath, the big giant, it's very symbolic of the carnal man. David, very symbolic of Christ comes in the name of God, the nature of God, the name of the Lord, and uh, smacks down that Goliath, smack down on him. So it was like I was thinking the worst out of the blue, right, thinking the worst. I didn't want to put it out there, but then Shiloh smacks me down. It was like the instant that she reminded me that I shouldn't like just grab on to the worst case scenario and make it mine, something else popped into mind. And it is, just remarkable. It was so remarkable that I told Shiloh, I said, oh, oh my goodness, I bet you it's a hundred monkeys. See, I didn't know it was a hundred monkeys. I just heard monkeys got loosed. That's all I heard. You know, a couple of people put it out there on Twitter. Some people put it out there, like Davo put it out there on YouTube, but I didn't get the whole story. But something hit me. And I thought, after Shiloh said, don't think the worst, I thought, it's gotta be a hundred monkeys. Now, why would it be a hundred monkeys, you say? Why, right? Why, 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 Jacob? Why, why is it a hundred monkeys? Because there is such a prophetic message in this story. You're gonna see in a second, I'm gonna get there. But let me tell you about the monkeys that, that, uh, that like broke out and broke free. By the way, they're now all accounted for, okay? There's a couple of monkeys, they had to be euthanized. I guess three of them were put down, sadly, you know? Kind of a bummer for, I mean, probably not a bummer for them if they've been in cages and then they're just like test animals and they're putting all sorts of terrible things. It's amazing, you know, it's amazing. I don't know if you heard about the uh, the guy whose name means that you know the maker of sickles sickle you know the, the guy the death has the sickle and I don't know if you heard about the terrible experiments and the terrible things that they were doing to these animals it's I mean they should probably be locked up you know probably be locked up just totally cruel totally cruel But these monkeys, they caused a little bit of a stir. Why? Because officials were told 
to keep an eye on the area, make sure nobody comes down with any colds. That's, that's strange, right? Totally sus, totally sus. So the, after the truck carrying a hunter of the creatures crashed in Pennsylvania on Friday, according to local police, several monkeys escaped the collision. Three of the monkeys had to be put down, says the Associated Press. Press. Here's a quote. Little monkeys, uh, we got bears, we got coyotes, we have deer, you know, all the time. A little three pound monkey doesn't scare me, but they're so concerned. That's what concerns me, said Howie Lurch a Valley Township. The Valley shadow of death these <laughs> monkeys are loose friday night news watch 16 spoke with michelle fallon of danville who saw the entire accident and she jumped into action helping both drivers and the loads that they were carrying so michelle says i walk back up the hill and this guy tells me oh uh, he's hauling cats. I said, oh, so I go over to look in the crate and there's a green cloth over it. So I peel it back. I stick my finger in and go kitty kitty and it pops its head up and it's a monkey. You know, it's a monkey, Fallon said. Fallon was contacted by the CDC and was told to monitor herself for cold or flu-like symptoms. <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine you, 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 you're, uh, you, you go, here, kitty, 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 and a monkey pops up. It would be scary, right? Boo! So the one monkey got away. But now it's accounted for. They have them all. They got them all. All kidding aside. <laughs> all kitty aside. <laughs> uh, hundredth monkey. Let me get to the point. Let me get to the point. Because this is actually, uh, this is actually pretty cool. You know, you would think that I'm uh, doing preventative medicine so I don't get the virus to the crown. That was an inside joke to the people that are very... <laughs> cannabis! Cannabis now prevents, they say, prevents the infection in laboratory studies. Supposedly, there's something that's in the cannabis that keeps it from going into the human cell. So they're doing trials. Every, every pothead in the world right now is rejoicing. I'm totally immune, dude. <laughs> that's everybody who uses medical marijuana or marijuana doesn't talk like that. Just, the, just in my head, they do. So, talking to Shiloh, she hits me in the head with the fact that I was being a little fearful and a little silly. Made me feel a little silly because she's only 18, you know, and she's like, I'm supposed to be teaching her. But once again, we're, we're human, right? We're, uh, we're not perfect. We're not perfect, right? In God's eyes, we, we are because he, he knows the finished product. But right now, you know, we're, we're, uh, we, we have issues. We get scared. We, we deal with things, you know. And it's, uh, we have our moments. But after she corrected me, I thought of this old story about these hundred monkeys. Okay, so back in uh, like 19, I think it was 50, 52. Some people say this didn't really happen. Other people say it did happen. It doesn't matter whether it's, uh, you know, a literal thing or not. Primatologists were conducting a behavioral study on a troop of Maka, um, Japanese monkeys, okay? On the island of Kojima. Kojima! Hi! That was the name of the island. The researchers would supply these troops with such foods as sweet potatoes and wheats and everything else. Okay, so basically puts these, um, you know, monkeys on the island and uh, they study them. And they were feeding them with these sweet potatoes, but they drop them on the beach, they get a bunch of sand on it. And, it, you know, it's not, who wants to eat food with sand in it? You've been to the beach, right? You've made your PB&J and it, it falls in there. You can't eat that PB&J after it's covered in a bunch of sand. <laughs> it's gross. One of the monkeys, I guess one of the uh, monkeys figured out, I bring it over to the stream. I rinse it off and then ate it and then taught it to the other monkeys. So now they're all like, you know, they're all cleaning off their food before they eat smart, right? These Japanese monkeys on Kojima Island. Very smart. But what was strange was you got the same monkeys on other islands, totally unrelated to this group of primates that are being studied. And when a hundred of the monkeys on that one island figured it out, it was like instantaneous. All across every other island, 
all the monkeys figured it out. It was like collectively something happened. It's like if 10% of a group understands something, the whole group understands something. That's not the percentage. I'm just trying to put it in terms you understand. It would be like if a bunch of people got together all over the world, if all of humanity, ate, I don't know how many billions people, seven point whatever billion people are on the planet, if a certain amount of people understand something, everybody understands it at the same time. Like it's something more than just coincidence, if you will. Little more than a coingy dinky do. The hundredth monkey effect is a hypothetical phenomenon in which a new behavior or idea is spread rapidly by unexplained means from one group to all related groups. Once a critical number of members of one group exhibit the new behavior or acknowledge the new idea. So I tell Shiloh, I say, I bet it's a hundred monkeys. I bet it's a hundred monkeys, Shy bet. I say to her and I look it up. And, she, and as I'm looking up, she goes, you know, I always wondered where you get your shows from. So basically you just kind of, just wing it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's called faith. I let God do the, uh, do the work for me. Then it becomes easy, it's fun. I look it up, I see a hundred monkeys and it hits me. And then I tell Shiloh all about the potatoes and the monkeys and the sand and how in one instant, everybody gets it. Now, why is this cool for all of us? Because this is the day of the Lord. There's a remnant, there's a first stripe of people. When that first stripe is presented and it's holy, according to scripture, the whole harvest becomes holy. Hmm, you felt that, right? A little tingly? Let me say that again. There's a remnant, a first stripe, like when you're planting a garden, right? You say you plant your green beans or your cucumbers, right? You plant them, there's a little bit that come out at first. It's called the first fruit. It's a first fruit. But then at the end, if you see that first fruit and those beans are nice and those cucumbers are juicy, you know that the rest of the harvest is gonna be good. You know that in a short period of time, a lot more beans, a lot more cucumbers are gonna come in. You gotta get that first stripe first. Got to get that hundred monkeys first. And that's what we just had. That's, that's powerful stuff. But my mind went to the very worst case scenario. My mind went to, now they're going to use this as a, this is going to be the next one. This is going to be the next one that comes upon us and they're going to link it to that. And of course it's a big, big lie and it was all planned and it wasn't really an accident, but that's, not necessarily true, is it? Not necessarily true at all. The fact that they asked, hey, you know, monitor yourself for colds or anything. Maybe, maybe you catch a cold from monkey. I don't know. Maybe there was something going on. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe they were being tested on. I don't know. They were accounted for. So far, so good. Not a big deal. But look at this beautiful story that we have. Well, isn't that, isn't that much more impressive? Isn't that better? You know, we have a tendency of thinking the worst. I called up my old pastor, Pastor Binion. He's, uh, he's in charge of all of, uh, I probably shouldn't say this, you know, just in case. But he's in charge of like the second largest faith in the world. He's in charge of like a very big portion of it. He's over all of the pastors. And he said that, you know, they've lost so, so many people. And it's been really, really sad. And so I was telling him about how, you know, I, I've been finding myself sometimes, it's like, you know, I've been finding myself, and then probably you are as well, like the, 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 the worst thoughts start popping up, and why wouldn't they? They're talking about, ooh, Russia and Ukraine and, and Taiwan and China. It's like nonstop. And I've come on here, and what do I say? So I don't want to tell you that that's coming, because I don't know. I don't want it to be true. I want to see the hundred monkeys. That's what I want. I want to speak life and not death. The power of our words. I can't express this enough to you. You see, so I tell him this. I tell him this. It's like, you know, it kind of bums me out. And he reminds me. He said, you know, the reason why God had to wipe things out in Noah's day 
with the flood. And we have a flood going on right now. We had this flood, right? And take takes a while after the flood, when the ark finally rests on land, takes a while for things to kind of even start to resemble new. But could you imagine how terrible it must have been in the aftermath of it all? But God said that man's minds and their imagination, their imagination is on evil all the time. And that hit me. I was like, wow, you know, I guess that's right. You know, because, you know, the devil comes many times and will we'll, uh, pollute our minds with a bunch of terrible thoughts. Like the very first thing that hits me when I see a bunch of monkeys escape. That's all I saw. I didn't know it was CDC or anything else, but immediately my mind went to, oh, it must be, it must be really bad. And oh, now they're going to use this as a cover up. And of course, like a meatball that I am, because I'm not perfect. I'm not going to come on here all the time and tell you how great I am. I like to show you the wounds that I've received. I like to show you the wounds. Like Jesus, when he came to Timothy, he said, look here, peer, look at the holes in my hands. You know, look at, the, look, at, look at this. Put your finger in my side. Feel my pain. See what I've been through. I haven't arrived. I've gone through it. But there's a purpose for it. I count it all dung, everything that I've been through and everything I've accomplished. All of it for the kingdom. And could you imagine, this is how things work, right? So you think the worst, and then you speak the worst, and this is why the scriptures... I, I've, I've said this to people, and uh, emails, and I've tried to give them what is called a key to the kingdom. You want a key to the kingdom? You want to know how to, you want to, know how to rule and reign in, in, in Christ? This is the key that Christ gave to his disciples. You want the key? Do you want the key to overcoming? You want the key to living a life of, of peace? You want a key? Uh, of of seeing the kingdom of God here and now. Judge not lest you judged. Whatever is bound in heaven is bound in earth. Whatever is loosed in heaven is loosed in earth. Whatever you think, whatever you think and then release here. Like if you believe things are going to go a certain way and then you express it out of the power of your mouth, yeah, your tongue, it's like the, the, uh, the rudder of a ship even though that's not even in the King James anymore, <laughs> which is so strange. It's now the helm, which makes no sense because a rudder makes a lot more sense. It's very small, and it has the power to steer a ship into the rocks or away from the rocks. Power, life, and death is in our tongue. The tongue is a very hard thing to tame, the scriptures say. It's almost impossible. That's why God has to step in. Whatever is bound in heaven is bound in earth. Whatever you think you can't do, you can't do. Whatever you think um, is going to happen, is going to happen. Because with faith, all things are possible. And if you believe it, how many times have you said, I knew that was going to happen. Oh man, oh, what a rainy day it is today. I knew it was going to be a bad day. I knew the car was going to break down. I knew this, I knew that. How many times have you said it? And you don't think that you maybe had something to do with it. Power of life and death is in our tongue. Here's a key of the kingdom. Whatever is bound in heaven is bound in earth. Whatever is loosed in heaven is loosed in earth. Whatever is loosed in heaven is loosed in earth. Whatever you think in here and express out here becomes. As a man thinketh, so he is. Now that's a key. So if I think the worst and I come on here and I tell everybody, oh, now you will see, it'll happen this way. And maybe it will, I don't know. But if I say it and I believe it and then you believe it and we get a hundred monkeys to believe it, what do you think's gonna happen? I don't know. I think this hundred monkeys is a little better than you think because I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna let you in on a little, a little, little secret. You're more than you know. It's kind of the slogan of my website, jacobisrael.com, in the corner over here. Uh, you should go there and subscribe to my website. You should. Also, you should subscribe to me on Facebook. All the links are in the description, on Twitter, on Telegram. I, uh, I make announcements because I know that a lot of people don't get this. This is a movement. This is, we're going somewhere. And we're going to be okay so long as we're serving God. That's, th that's a promise. It's a promise. You, my friends, you think you're a slave? Oh, I'm telling you, you are more than that. You are a co-heir in the kingdom. Now, I'm going to 
before I share something that's gonna just be totally mind-blowing and you're gonna think, oh my goodness, Jacob, he must be so spiritually grounded that nothing bothers him. He would never have what the doctors call a terrible panic attack. If that's what it was, I don't consider myself to be a very anxious guy or something. I got a couple of, uh, you probably don't know this, I got a couple of diseases. I've been, I've lived in the hospital. I've suffered quite a bit. I've Crohn's disease, I've ankylosing spondylitis. You know, I found a way to get away from all of the, uh, the things that really weren't helping. And I believe making things worse, all the terrible drugs and all the terrible treatments and all the things that kill your immune system and all these. And I'm not recommending you do that because maybe it saved my life. I don't know, I've had surgeries. I've had, look, I've even had my stomach. I've had my stomach operated on. You can see right there, there's a scar. I've gone through some stuff in my life. I've had balloon dilations. I've had blood transfusions. I've suffered. I've lived in a, I don't like going to the hospital. I don't like going to the emergency room, so I don't find myself going very often. But a couple of nights ago, I'm in a relatively great mood. I think everything's going to plan. Everything's good, right? I got my show working. I'm ready to go. I'm excited to share it with all of you. I go downstairs and I talk to my little girl, Shiloh, who is now, you know, getting ready to go back to school on a roll. All my children are doing so wonderful. Noah, Anthony, Shiloh, all in college and all dealing with this mad world and, and overcoming. And I'm so proud of them all. But you know, we gotta pay the bills, right? So I, you probably don't know this if you're new to the channel. I raised my kids, I was a single daddy. My, my first wife and I, we split up when Shiloh was like one, it was like a baby. And actually on her second birthday, I was in the ICU for a long time bleeding out. They thought that that was the end for me. I actually, you know, even called and said, hey, bring bring the children down because this may be it. And, um, but it was too far of a drive, but that's all right. That doesn't matter. <laughs> Neither here nor there. I knew I'd be out and I was out on her second birthday and we went fishing with my grandfather, Poppy, and we caught eight fish. Noah caught seven, Shiloh caught the eighth, which I think is just beautiful and what a way to celebrate you know having another day to live and that was really the last time because what i did then was um i ended up i, I got custody of my children in a very short period of time was we'll say it was amicable we, we'll say that <laughs> i'm an easy guy you know i don't make things uh, hard i don't you know i'm not asking for money here and there but she always promised that she would help out with college now their mom lives in, in California. And it's, you know, it's really hard. She's been through a lot of hard stuff since we broke up and, and thank God we're on, you know, great terms and, and, um, and the children, they love her and everything else. But there was something about the payment and it just, I don't know, I must have like, something inside of me must have like, there must have been some kind of like deep rooted, hidden something. But after I finished dealing with this little college thing. And it wasn't like anybody was yelling or it was, there was nothing to it. It was really weird. I had this crushing pain in my chest and I couldn't make it up the stairs. And I started shaking uncontrollably. And Danielle, it was, she was put one blanket on top of me, another blanket on top of me, another blanket on top of me. And I literally, I, uh, I, I shook for about 28 minutes straight. I couldn't stop shaking. I didn't know what was happening. I thought, oh, this is it. Bertha, I'm coming. You know, I thought that this was it. I thought that this was it. And um, my son, Noah, who is, you know, he's very, you know, he's, they have me, daddy, right? And thank God we have Danielle. I wouldn't have met Danielle if it wasn't for moving to Long Island, because that's where my ex lived. And I moved to Long Island with the kids so that she'd be a little more involved. And, and it, it all works out. It all worked out great. But what for whatever reason, that's what happened. Now, maybe there's an underlying condition that I'm not aware of. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, we went to the ER. It was scary. Stayed there until like 4.30 in the morning. But I mean, really, it was weird because I've, I'm not a baby. And I'm not like somebody to complain. So this was very strange for me. But it wasn't so strange that I'm in the hospital room. I'm still uploading the video because this is so important to me. Like I said, I mean, this is 
That's never happened to me before. I've been through some stuff. So for that to just come on for no reason. And the weird thing is, I work out so hard at the gym. And by the way, some of you in the comment section are like, I think you're in New York and you're going to the gym, so you must have had, you know. And uh, well, they never asked me because you know why? I walk in, I go, hey, what's up? With my headphones on. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. But I'm not breaking any rules. I'm not breaking any rules because I didn't know, I don't know if there are any rules there that are supposed to be enforced or anything. It's ironic because here, I so I go to the ER and of course I'm curious. Now I have access to like all the people that are in the emergency room. And as I'm like holding my chest because it really, it was really weird. I didn't understand it. You know, my blood pressure's great. The EKGs were perfect. I, I actually went to the walk-in earlier when it, when, it, when it first started, I figured, oh, well, you know, we'll get the EKG. And then it just got worse, progressive. It was very strange. The whole thing was very strange. But every single person I talked to, from the person in there, they were all angry. They were short-staffed and they were angry. They got one, they got two, they got three, and they still got it. And they said everybody was coming in. And they feel like they've been duped, all of them. I was in, on the bed, just laying there thinking, this is taking forever. <laughs> Like really, it took so long and, and, and thank God because um, there weren't that many people there at all because I would have felt terrible if, the, you know, it was like there were a bunch of people and there, you know, there were no empty beds and people had to like sit in the hall. There was like nobody there. It was very strange. But I was listening to doctors talking about it. People are very unhappy, especially in this, in this field because they feel like they've been duped. They're so, so disheartened. And they should be. But I believe that this has to happen. You have to get a hundred monkeys, right? You gotta get a hundred monkeys before they all come around. The hundred monkeys probably looked all crazy. The other monkeys are like, what are you doing in the water? You don't put, the, put your food in the water, you put it in your mouth, you big goofball. But then when that hundredth monkey does it, then everybody's like, hey, this is a much better way to live our life. Knowing the truth being compassionate, not being greedy or cruel or corrupt. Because if they be corrupt, that's been our prayer here on the show. If you're new, they be corrupt. Lord, bring that corruption to light and have them corrected for it. Because we want people to repent. We want people to turn around. We want people that have been corrupted to repent of it. Most of the people that did great things for the Lord, they weren't great people to begin with. I wasn't a great person to begin with. I think I was very nice though. I was a very nice guy. I was a good guy. I don't think I was a bad guy. But in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's all relative. But we got this power within us. And, uh, and the scriptures declare who we are. And there's a mystery that's hidden in, uh, in, in these scriptures. And this is kind of like my passion is to share that with all of you. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use my old, uh, my older Bible because I have it marked off. Just a little harder to read because a little smaller print. So in Galatians 2, we learn from, from Paul, this is a great thing, okay? Because I was trying to share the, what the resurrection of Christ is and how, what it means to us, right? Because just waiting for some superhero to return outside of you doesn't help you much. But understanding that Christ died for you is in you, that you're the body of Christ, that you're given the name of Christ, the nature of Christ, righteousness, peace, and joy, which is found in the kingdom of God, then you're given the mind of Christ and that we're supposed to put that on. You have the mind of Christ. You're given the name of Christ. You are the body of Christ. That's the resurrection. He rises from the grave of who we thought we were. Literally, there was a man that literally died so we could understand this. The firstborn among many. Get what I'm saying? The first fruit among many. The firstborn among many. The firstborn from the dead. The firstborn among many siblings. That's pretty awesome. And in the book of Galatians, it tells you who you are. You don't think that of yourself. You think you're a servant. You think you're a slave. You think you're small. 
but you're not. So Paul says in Galatians 2, he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm crucified with Christ. No longer Paul that lives. I'm crucified with Christ. No longer Jacob that lives. Nevertheless, Jacob lives. But Christ lives in me. Christ in you. The hope of glory. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith. The same faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Get that? Why is this interesting? You'll see. So in, in chapter 3 of Galatians, there's a mystery. At the end of chapter 3, you see I have it like marked off because this was something that I learned a long, long time ago. I remember I wanted to go to a church when, when I was much younger. I wanted to go to a church and the church door was locked. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the beach anyway. And um, I'll just read the Bible there. That's what I did. I realized that that fig tree was never going to produce fruit for me. I cursed it. I said, I'm not going to go there anymore because it wasn't feeding me. It wasn't giving me the figs. It wasn't giving me the fruit. The doors were locked. So I went to the beach and I had that revelation. And so what I used to do, even though I still went to church, so I'd sit in church and, uh, you know, I'd study and I'd learn. Felt good being there. But, you know, God had his other plans. And one day when I was in the back row, kind of tuning out what was happening. And I don't recommend you doing that. If you have a great pastor, you should listen. And one day I was reading Galatians and this hit me in such a huge way. So this is at the end of Galatians chapter three. And once again, Paul is, you're writing to the people. And he's talking about faith. But after that faith is come, after you understand this faith that I'm talking about, that Paul was talking about, Christ in you, the hope of glory, after you understand who you are in Christ, you're no longer under the schoolmaster, you know? You're no longer under, you don't have to, you're not under any, you don't need any tutelage anymore. You don't need to be under that anymore. Now you're under, you know, the kingdom of God. But after that faith has come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster. For you, listen to this, because this is talking of you. You probably don't get it. You probably don't believe it. You probably think there's only one child of God and not that we're all children of God. For you are all children of God. And how, how are we children of God? How are we children of God? By faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you who have been baptized into Christ, Christ, the power and wisdom of God, baptism to be immersed by the power and wisdom of God, as many of you who have been just washed over by the power and wisdom of God, by Christ, that Christ has taken your heart hold and, and has taken over your life, as many of you have been baptized by the Holy Spirit that God said he would pour out on all flesh, as many of you who have been baptized in Christ, and I'm not talking about literally being dunked in some water. That's not going to get you much. It's a start. I'm talking about being baptized by Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit. As many of you who've been baptized in Christ, guess what? You have put on Christ. Now, there's no Jew, there's no Greek, there's no bond, there's no free, there's no male, there's no female. There are no differences among you, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. One body, one mind, one, one. Now listen to this. And if you be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed, by the way, we find out is Christ. And where do we find that out? In the very beginning of this chapter. This is Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed, his offspring, were the promises made. God didn't say, and to seeds, 
as of many, many people, but as of one, and to your seed, which is Christ. So God made promises to Abraham. Unto Abraham and his seed were the promises made, not to many seeds, not to many people, one seed, which is Christ. Abraham's seed is Christ. Abraham's seed is Christ. been baptized in Christ, then guess who you are? And if you be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed. Who's Abraham's seed? Abraham's seed is Christ. If you've been baptized into Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Who is Abraham's seed? Abraham's seed is Christ. You are children of God, and if you're baptized into Christ, you're Abraham's seed, and Abraham's seed is Christ. I hope this is sticking in. And you are heirs according to the promise. Now listen to this, because this is why a lot of you think that you're like a meatball like me. Now I say that the heir, as long as they are a child, means immature, they differ nothing from a slave or a servant, even though... They are Lord of everything. God gave us this world. God gave us dominion. Christ died for you. Now we must die for Christ and allow Christ, the day star, to rise in our heart. Paul said, I travail in birth for Christ to be birthed and formed in you. Why? Because when that hundredth monkey appears, so too. To all the other monkeys wake up and realize they're more than monkeys to begin with. That made me feel so good. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for your prayers and for your, your work. And I felt silly. I felt silly. You know, I wanted to have a great story for you. I could tell you so many people go to the hospital. It's a terrible thing. Me? Panic attack. I guess. We don't know. I'm still going to see a cardiologist. It was very weird. Very weird. Never happened to me before. Very strange. Very strange, but it, 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 it gave me this for all of you to show you that at times, you know, we may have our hearts fail ourselves for fear. <laughs> Men's hearts will fail themselves for fear. Felt like my heart was failing and perhaps maybe because maybe I was subconsciously not acting in hope. Maybe as my last video, if you haven't seen it, you should check it out should definitely watch it here. I'll link it right now, right there. Maybe part of that hope, that 13th rung on Jacob's ladder, part of that hope, part of that courage, perhaps, maybe it was broken in my life too and was crushing my heart because of it. Or maybe God just put me there so that I could learn all this, so I could come on here and encourage all of you and let you know, hey, Jacob's a meatball too who worries and gets a panic attack and goes to the hospital, but here I am. Here I am, Lord, to do your will. So come at me with what you got. You can come at me with sticks and stones. They may break my bones and names. You could try to hurt me, but I come in the name of the Lord. And so do you. Why? Because you're Abraham's seed. And Abraham's seed is Christ. I love each and every one of you. Please do subscribe, check the bell, share the channel around, get yourself a Uranus as a planet mug and an I am a witness shirt if you want to support the channel in a way that's cool and fun, you know, because in the morning you could be like, hey, Uranus is a planet. That makes people laugh. Get yourself a copy of the novel. Thank you for all the reviews. We have almost like a thousand reviews between um, America, Canada, and then I couldn't believe it. Well over a thousand, I thought something, almost 700 reviews just in the US alone. Read the reviews, it's amazing. There are only two, two chooches out there that gave me a bad review. Everybody else like five stars. I couldn't believe it. What a beautiful thing. God puts this desire in my heart, says one day it's gonna be a bestseller. And we all saw when God poured out his spirit on that day, that day in what is called and I prayed for it on the show, we saw it became a best-selling new release, a number one bestseller. 
Thank you. Thank you all for what you do. Thank you to my patrons. By the way, I'm going to start trying to do something. I got, I got a new um, computer. I just put OBS on there. I know I'm not as cool and hip. I don't have all the cool programs, but I'm going to be starting to do live shows again. And I'm going to try to do something special for the people that are doing special things for me. I talk to you later. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Jacob Israel. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share this channel around. If these shows have helped you, help Jacob to reach more any way you can and have the best day ever. Click it.